Anderson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. Today we have Andrew, Jimmy, Mark, and Ryan here to break down some of the sour parts of the NFL. Now, gentlemen, we had two star quarterbacks who looked really suspect last Sunday. You know, we had the Bucks lose to the Washington football team, and we had Russell Wilson have his first shutout, he, him being shut out for the first time in his career. You know, this is a really interesting one, Andrew. We'll go to you first. Which quarterback are you more concerned about for the future? Yeah, I mean, like you guys, like you said, this was a rough game for both these quarterbacks. I think I'm a little more concerned with Russ right now. I mean, taking a look at the stats, an abysmal, the thing that, you know, pops out right away, 39.7 QB rating. That's unacceptable for a guy like Russ. I mean, he's, he missed like five weeks. You know, he's, he's still probably a little hurt coming off the injury. We'll see how he does. His team's struggling. They got to bounce back. But I, I'm a little, I'm worried about Russ. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough, yeah. You saw the numbers, and he got shut out. No touchdowns. He threw two bad interceptions Two bad last picks. Week. Yeah. yeah, they were really bad against Green Bay. Well, who's up-and-coming defense? Ryan, what were your thoughts on that one? I agree with Andrew. Um, you know, it all boils down to Russ's wrist to me. He's obviously still not 100%, and if the Seahawks keep Russ at the starting role and give him no breaks at all, it could get bad, and, it, and they can't afford to lose many games as it is. I mean, you play stupid games, uh, you win stupid prizes. Yeah. Jimmy? You know, I'm not worried too much about either one of them. The Seahawks defense is a bit fraudulent, as we like to say here on the desk. <laughs> you know, the Buccaneers, they're without Antonio Brown, without Rob Gronkowski, two of Brady's favorite targets. I think they'll get back on track. It's a great week to do so against my Giants, unfortunately. But the Seahawks, you know, both great quarterbacks, both have their weapons. I think in the end, they'll put up good numbers. Yeah, like Jimmy said, you know, quarterbacks are going to have their bad games. It's going to happen. And for two quarterbacks like Tom Brady and Russell Wilson, quarterbacks of their caliber, you know, you don't want to see it happen, but it will happen. I guess going forward, I'm more concerned about Brady for the future future. But Russell Wilson and Brady, you know, they'll continue to have their good games this season. Right. And look, like you just said, Jimmy, they play your team, the Giants, on Monday night. Seattle has... Um, Seattle has a conference game, I believe. They play the Cardinals maybe without Kyler Murray. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two bounce back. Now, from superstars to under-the-radar stars, we'll go to you, Jimmy, first. You know, we've had a lot of guys who have performed well who a lot of people might not know. So who do you think is the most slept-on player in the NFL right now? Second-year starter, Cincinnati quarterback, the man out of LSU, Joe Burrow. Ten games this season. He's thrown for almost 2,700 yards. A 2-1 to one touchdown interception ratio at 13-5 to five, and a Q QBR of 89.5. You know, we saw Burrow go down last season. The Bengals were 2-4 and four without him. Right now, they're in contention for a wild card spot. Maybe in the win the division, they can get hot. So, with him at the quarterback position, he gives them life. Yeah, there was a, there was a good while where he was, you know, where the Bengals were the best team in the AFC for a very, very short span. Ryan, who you got? I got the second best wideout in the game behind Cooper Cup, Debo Samuel. He is untouchable, bird and brighter than the sun. He has 54 receptions, 979 receiving yards, um, and 18 yards per catch. Um, that's He's fourth in yards per catch, second in receiving yards, and also uh, uh, second in yards per game. If he plays one more game, he's right up there with Cooper Cup um, at the top of the wide receiving category in the league. He just has Barry Sanders syndrome, you know? It's, you know it, he doesn't get much attention because the Niners are up and down. I'm going with a man from my own favorite team, the Denver Broncos. I'm taking running back Javante Williams. As a rookie, he is balling out. He is running over defenders. It takes at least six guys to take him down when he is on the move. Averaging five yards a carry, and something I want to talk about is his 38 forced missed tackles. That is highest in the league. The second man is Jonathan Taylor, who has like 60 more carries than him. Right. Andrew. Yeah, I mean, me and Ryan are green once again. I'm going Debo Samuel, too. I mean, you saw the stats. He's got 54 catches, almost 1,000 yards already. Uh, he's got four games so far this season, over 100 yards. This guy's not talked about enough. We talked about him a little bit in the early in the season, kind of stopped talking about him. We've got to bring him back up. He's one of the top ten receivers. Yeah, and I think another league. reason why we don't talk about him much is because that team is known for running the football. Mm -hmm. True. Kyle yeah, Shanahan's absolutely. offense is known for running the football, but you saw the stats. He's putting up an amazing number. You know he's going to have well over 1,000 yards for the season. He's probably going to hit 1,000 in the next two games. Ryan, you know, there's been a lot of buzz of coaches being on the hot seat. You know we're halfway through the NFL season. You know, some coaches will get fired at the end of the season. So who do you think has the weakest job security in the NFL right Speaking now? of Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan. What? Since they signed him to the – oh, just, just wait. Since they signed his six-year extension after the Super Bowl, he's gone 9-15. and 15. Um, you know, he's supposed to be an offensive guru, guru, but his offense has let him down constantly. They did beat up the Rams a couple weeks ago, but, you know, a broken coach is right twice a year. So, that's that. Now, Jimmy, you were going to say. Well, you understand Kyle Shanahan has had about uh, 
a ton of games without Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo's missed almost the whole season, 2018-19 season. You know, 26-12 and 12 as a starter, Jimmy Garoppolo. In comparison, with he's had to deal with C.J. Beathard, Nick Mullins, Brian Hoyer. Combined without Garoppolo, they're 7-28 and 28 in the season. He was healthy. They went to the Super Bowl. Jimmy, I, I know you might have a difference of opinion over there with Ryan. But, but, but here's, the, here's the other thing about Kyle Shanahan, is that he is staggering Trey Lance's development. We were given the, 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 uh, um, the impression before the season started that they would split. Um, that they would split time. But he hasn't played in three games, and I knew that Trey Lance was a killer the first time that I saw him. And if he wants to bolster that, ta if the Niners want to bolster that talent, they need to get Shanahan out because he doesn't know what to do with him right now. Jimmy, who do you have? I know you didn't agree with Kyle Shanahan, but who do, you, who do you think has the weakest job security in the NFL right now? I think it's the weakest by default just because of who's their GM. Give me Joe Judge, my New York Giants. <laughs> I think with Dave Gettleman on the hot seat, the horrible job that he has done, you know, trading Odell Beckham Jr., not being able to repair the offensive line. Joe Judge as a byproduct of that. If they bring in a new uh, general manager in New York, they're probably going to want to bring in a new guy. 9-16, and 16, he's blaming his headset. Jason Garrett brought in his offensive coordinator, not doing the job. I don't think the players are respecting him as much as they say. Mark? Once again, going back to my favorite team, the Denver Broncos. But yeah, for uh, like, uh, this, is, this, this theme had a good here. thing. Now, now this yeah, is not, definitely not a good one. Less fortunate reason this time. Uh, Vic Fangio is has the weakest job security in my opinion. You know, George Payton. You bring in a new GM. You move on from John Elway. George Payton is going to want to do things him, his way. Uh, John Elway has a tendency to hire defensive-minded, older guys. I think George Payton has the right mind to instill a new culture in that team and bring in a young offensive co coach next year. Yeah, and I will not lie to you, things have not been good since Gary Kubiak has left. No, not you at know, all. And that was that's Peyton Manning era when you guys won the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, so. you know, you look at uh, Vance Joseph and now Vic Fangio, who's 17 and 25 with the Broncos. Yeah, T It's tough, tough scene there for the Broncos, Mark. Andrew, close this out. I gotta go Matt Nagy of the Chicago Bears. I think he should have been gone after last season when they played terrible. He's 31 and 26 in his career with the Bears. They're three and six right now. They're third in the NFC North. They've lost four games in a row. I don't know how the guy's gonna have a job after the season. Hot take, I think if they don't make it to the NFC Divisional game, he's out of there. Well, I think the chances of that are very slim. So he's out of there. So I think, so I think, hey, I think, I think he's going. <laughs> <out of there. laughs> so, gentlemen, you know the NFL block. We know this is a staple here in WP Sports. Fest, and this last question is a staple as well. We can't not pick games on this block, right, gents? Yeah. So we have a really big game this Sunday afternoon. We have the Dallas Cowboys taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, I cannot wait for this one. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, we'll go to you. Who do you think is going to win this game? Well, it's a big-time game, so that only means one thing. A big-time choke from your Dallas Cowboys. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, they haven't played a great quarterback like him all season long. They've been reliant on turnovers all game, facing guys like Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, Sam Darnold, quarterbacks like that. Patrick Mahomes, he plays anything like he did last week against the Raiders. It's going to be a big Chiefs win in Arrowhead Stadium. Andrew, our resident Cowboy fan, I think I know your answer, but let's hear it. Yeah, I mean, this has been the absolute scariest game. I've had this marked in the calendar since the schedule came out. Give me my Dallas Cowboys this Save Sunday. Your chest. Let's give me the, the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> you know, they that was quieter than before. <laughs> <laughs> they got the best offense in the league. I mean, the Chiefs, not a good defense. Patrick Mahomes, sure, play good, whatever. All right, we're going into Arrowhead, and we're smacking the Chiefs on Sunday afternoon. Mm. Mark? Yeah, I'm taking the Cowboys as well. I just think that they, they absolutely have the highest powered offense in the league. And against the Chiefs defense with, you know, Daniel Sorensen starting out there in coverage, <laughs> I don't think that the Chiefs can do anything against that Cowboys offense. Ryan, close this out. The Chiefs could build a house out of the bricks that, that their fans have thrown at them, and they're going to get even more when the Cowboys beat them. It should be high scoring, but whenever the, the, the Chiefs face a quarterback at the caliber of Dak Prescott, they've gotten torched. I think the Cowboys win it by two possessions. Gonna be your lone wolf in here, Mr. Patton. How does that feel? You know, it feels to me like Patrick Mahomes. The Cowboys haven't faced anyone in his stature either. I don't think it's gonna be in a hostile environment in Arrowhead yeah. Stadium. They're gonna have a hard time guarding Travis Kelsey if they don't turn the ball over. I think it'll be a Chiefs route. Yeah, we drafted Micah Parsons for a reason, bro. So nope. Travis Kelsey, no caches. Let, let's be nice, gentlemen. Let's be nice. Well, that's all we have for this week's episode <laughs> on WP Sports Desk. Join us on December 3rd as we will have our next episode, as we will be on Thanksgiving break next Friday. Don't forget to follow us at SportsDeskWP on Twitter and Instagram for updates and more. And we'd like to give a special thank you to our cast and crew, and a special thank you to our studio manager, the tallest man in the room, Al Clark. From Studio B in Hamilton Hall, and for everyone here at the desk, I'm Samori Rose, and we'll see you guys next time.